since I've been here, I've been eating nothing but fruit. I mean, simple because it tastes great. It's ripe. Uh, it's tropical. It's satisfying. And there's a nice variety. Now, um, you would think that that's the way the locals would eat here naturally because the fruit literally grows everywhere. I'm on a property here. It's at, this property is actually for sale. It's 28 acres um, and most of it is jungle, primary jungle. And um, you, you would, um, there, there's tons of fruit on this property. You could just live off the fruit. There's coconut, there's pineapple, there's um, mangoes, different varieties of mangoes, bananas, uh, cacao, wh whatever you want, it's here, you know. And then, if you want, you could grow lower down on this land. You could grow your your own vegetable garden. Uh, you could sustain yourself pretty well on fruits and vegetables. And but yet, the locals here, they don't. That's not the way they eat. And in fact, yesterday I was at uh, one of the locals' homes, and it's interesting, you know, like the floor was dirt. There was no no hard surface on the floor, it's just a dirt floor and an open fire inside the house what they were cooking on and their main staple, the main staple of the locals here is rice and beans. They have it for breakfast, lunch and supper and everything else is a complement to that but um, they also eat meat as well and they like to fry their food, they like the fatty stuff um, so it's not what you would think being in a hot, humid climate, uh, like out here, you would think fruit would be the natural thing to for, for the locals to want to eat, and yet they're eating a lot of cooked, fried food. However, you look at the, the men, mainly the men, now there are some obese people here, and there's no question about that, because they do get access to junk food as well, but uh, most of the men I've seen out here are... Um, thin and muscular, like the ideal image for what any high carb, low fat vegan would aspire to. And yet, most of them smoke and, and drink. <laughs> so it's kind of a funny culture. Um, and it would contradict your notions of what you would consider to be health and fitness. Uh, yet physically looking at them, they look very fit. Now you look closer, right? When they smile, their teeth are all yellow and everything. So, not all of them, but you know, you, you do start to notice things closer up, right? You, you just, you know, you got to take time to get to know the people and the culture to really get to the inside of what's going on here. But it's not idyllic is what I'm saying. And it's, you know, as, you know, we from the north, we bring our ideas to this land. Like, they think I'm nuts the way I eat. There is not a vegan, not one vegan in this area. I have not met one. And I've met a lot of locals since I've been here. And there's no vegan restaurant in, in the town that's about 15 kilometers away. Um, and yeah, even if you, you ask for vegetarian, um, there's a good chance you'll end up getting meat anyways, like pork, because they don't really think of pork as being meat. Uh, it's, it's a bizarre, you know, mindset that it's hard for me from the north to relate to. But then again, they think I'm bizarre, I'm alien. Like, how can you just eat, you know, nothing but fruits and vegetables and for me I've been eating nothing but fruit just with some lettuce they think I'm insane they, they don't get it at all but anyhow it's so it makes you wonder you know is um, fruitarianism is um, this whole idea of veganism is this an idea that we're just bringing to a land like this it doesn't it doesn't exist here well it doesn't exist here it's it is, it is an ideal. Um, it doesn't seem to be happening naturally. That doesn't mean that the way the people are eating here is good. I'm not saying that either. Um, you know, we, it doesn't mean that we should follow the example of the locusts because the locusts could have it totally wrong. But it is an ideal. And I have yet to really see, like, especially in the area of fruitarianism, as much as I love the idea, I really do. Uh, and I, because I love fruit, especially when I can get it in a tropical environment like this where it's readily available. But, is it natural? I mean, even the monkeys here are, are, are omnivores. Um, so, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't have 
the answer. I'm just, I come to a place like this, I try to be as honest as possible, knowing that I have my own ideas that I bring here, and then what is really going on. All I know is, this land is amazing, the fruit here tastes great, and I'm enjoying it. And, you know, when I go back to Canada, um, will I continue to be a fruitarian? I don't even know if I'm going to continue being a fruitarian day in and day out here. Um, it's just, that's all I felt like, that's all so far I have I've have felt like eating. But um, when I go back, I know I'm going to be in a different climate with different quality of fruit. And uh, so I'll probably go back to eating cooked food. And I don't have a problem with that. I, you know, to me, I don't, yeah, there's no issue there. Anyhow, I thought I would just bring this up because it's, I just find it very curious how you can be in this land with an abundance of fruit and the locals are not consuming it like crazy. Uh, maybe that's why there is an abundance because they're not. Even, you know, the, like yesterday I was out with one of the locals and uh, we were picking mangoes and, and he, he did not understand what a ripe mango was, which, you know, he was picking these unripe mangoes. Oh yeah, good, good. Just cut it. And I said, no, it's not ripe. Anyhow, have a great day wherever you are. And I don't know what I'm going to do today, but I'm sure it'll be interesting. Take care.